So this is a model of the female reproductive system, and we're going to orient ourselves for in ter first in terms of directionality. So we're looking at the front. This is the pubic symphysis, that bone that is at the front of the coxa. And then here we have an inferior view, so these are the labia majora. And then I'm just going to keep rotating, and here you can see the, the anal orifice. And then I'm going to turn it over, because otherwise it's funny. And then here you can actually see the rectum. So this is a posterior view. And then I'm just going to rotate it around. And here we're looking at it from the superior view, so from inside the body cavity down. Here again you can see the rectum. And then here we have the uterus and the urinary bladder, and then that pubic symphysis. So the rectum, the uterus, the urinary bladder, and the pubic symphysis. And then also from this interior view, we can, we'll go back to it in a moment, but here we actually have the ovary, two ovaries, one on either side, and also the fallopian tube, tube or the oviduct. You can see that here, and then the one on the other side as well. So taking a look at the specific anatomy, we're going to be in an inferior view first. And again, here you have that pubic symphysis, which is a good landmark. And then here we have the labia majora, the large hairy folds of tissue that surround the, uh, what we call the vulva. And then internal to that, which we'll look at from a sagittal view as well, you can see labia minora, which are these thin hairless folds that um, form what's known as the, um, of the vestibule. There's several muscles that are involved here that help with um, arousal and orgasm. And there are these two muscles here. There's one here. This is called the bulbospongiosis muscle. The bulbospongiosis muscle here. And there's one on either side. This is a skeletal muscle. And then here we have the ischio or ischiocavernosis muscle here. And the ischiocavernosis muscle here. So one on either side that attaches actually from the clitoris, which is we're going to see in a moment, to the ischial tuberosity. So you can see it's going to go from the clitoris, which is an anterior structure, down to the ischial tuberosity, which is a posterior structure. From this view, we, if we remove that bulbospongiosis muscle, which you can see we did here on this side, we have two, major, um, two important structures for the functioning of the female reproductive system. This more anterior structure is called the um, the bulb of the vestibule, the bulb of the vestibule. And it's an erectile tissue structure, similar to a structure that we're gonna find in the penis. And the bulbospongiosis muscle sits over the bulb of the vestibule. And the bulb of the vestibule is, an, again, an important erectile, um, erectile structure. Just posterior to that is a gland called the greater vestibular gland. And the greater vestibular gland secretes um, fluids into the, into the vestibule in order to provide lubrication for arousal. And both of those are underneath the bulbospongiosis muscle. So you can see that it's been cut away here. So just to review, and then we're gonna go ahead and take a sagittal view and see some of these same structures. You have your pubic symphysis and your labia majora, one on either side. And then deeper to that, you have the labia minora, and then we have the muscle, the ischio or ischiocavernosis muscle, one on either side. And then also the bulbospongiosis muscle. Here you can see it fully intact. And here you can see it cut open so that you can see the bulb of the vestibule and the greater vestibular glands. So we're going to go ahead and open up the model so that we can see a, so that we can see a sagittal view. And again, here you can see from the sagittal view, here you have your rectum in the most posterior. Here you have your uterus in the vaginal canal. And then the uterus sits forward on top of the urinary bladder. You can see here with the urethra. And then here you have that pubic symphysis. So again, we have that same pattern of pubic symphysis, urinary bladder, uterus, rectum. We can also see some other structures here, and I'm just gonna work my way forward to backwards, so from anterior to posterior. Here you can see another erectile tissue. We saw the bulb of the vestibule um, just a little bit earlier, and here you have the clitoris, okay, or sometimes called the clitoris. So here you have the clitoris, and you'll notice that the clitoris has a little, um, it's actually called the glands of the clitoris that sort of extends out, and it's covered by this small piece of, of tissue that's actually part of the labia minora. Here you can see the labia minora, and this is called the prepuce. So the prepuce covers the glands of that clitoris. 
So here you see the clitoris and erectile tissue, and then that prepuce. And then you have your labia minora. And then here you have the labia majora, which again we saw from the outside, labia majora, and then that labia minora. Now the labia minora makes the space called the vestibule, and that's where we got that greater vestibular gland in the bulb of the vestibule. And you can see that the vestibule includes the urethral opening, the urethral orifice, and also the vaginal orifice. So if we work our way in, because we're talking about the reproductive system, if we work our way in, you have your, your vagina or your vaginal canal, and then you can see this sort of, this sort of scooped-like structure here, and this is called the fornix. So the fornix, and you can see that that uterus sort of dips down into the fornix at rest, okay, in an unaroused model. So here you have the fornix, and then here again you have the uterus. And this little part of the uterus, the very um, most superficial part, if we're, t or, um, uh, if we're talking about going to the surface, is the cervix. And the cervix means neck. So this is the cervix of the uterus, and it's sort of the neck of the uterus. So one closest to the outside environment. The uterus has several layers, right, several layers. The innermost layer here is called the endometrium, endo meaning in, and metrium telling us it's the, it's the uterus. And then you have the smooth muscle layer called the myometrium, the myometrium. And then this outermost layer, this connective tissue layer out here is called the perimetrium, the perimetrium. So this whole structure organ is the uterus with its layers, the endometrium most inside, the myometrium, and then the perimetrium, the outer connective tissue. And again, here you can see the urinary bladder and the urethra. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're gonna look at it from the back. So here's our rectum, and then here's anterior. And we're gonna go ahead and look at the other structures of the reproductive system, and then the ligaments that actually also hold them in place. So again, here's our rectum, here's our uterus, here's our urinary bladder. Here you can see the ovary, the ovary where our uh, gametes, our uh, eggs are going to be formed. And then to get from the ovary to the uterus, we need to go through a muscular structure called the fallopian tube or the oviduct. And you can see that fallopian tube here sort of cups the ovary. The model actually shows it touching it, but there's actually a very small space in there. And so these little projections here, if you can see that, that uh, sort of texture are called fimbriae, and they sort of sweep the, they make a little current that sweeps the ovulated egg into the fallopian tube, and you can see the fallopian tube going along here, and then dropping the egg into the uterus. And you can see that the fallopian tube is that slight pink color because it's musculature, okay? It's a muscle structure. But we wanna make sure the ovary stays in place, all right? We don't want it to float away, so we're gonna anchor it with a ligament that's gonna connect the ovary to the uterus, and that's the ovarian ligament, and you can see it right here, the ovarian ligament. It's a ligament, it's a connective structure, so it doesn't allow the egg to travel, but it does hold the ovary in place so it doesn't, it doesn't float away. We also hold the ovary and these other structures in place with this broad, flat ligament called the broad ligament, and you can see it just forms this kind of flat sheet of material, so this is the broad ligament that anchors the fallopian tube, it also anchors the ovarian ligament. Here you see the ureter, which carries urine from the kidneys. I'll show it to you from the side. Here's that ureter as well. That carries um, urine from the kidneys down to the urinary bladder. And then here's that ovarian ligament and that fallopian tube. And then the last of the ligaments we're gonna talk about is holding, gonna hold the uterus in place and it's, gonna, it's called the round ligament. And you can see a little bit of it here. There's, there would be one on the other side as well. And the round ligament holds the uterus to the abdominal wall, which would be right here. So here we have our round ligament. So just to review, here again from sort of an interior, posteriorly view, here we have our rectum and our uh, uterus with our perimetrium on top, okay, forming the connective tissue structure. Here you have the ovarian ligament anchoring the uterus to the ovary. Here you have the oviduct or the fallopian tube, which is a muscular structure that's going to carry the egg from the ovary to the uterus. 
Here you see the ureter, and here you have a round ligament, and all of these structures are embedded in this broad ligament.